Hi guys, it's Caroline and today I'm going to be doing a quarterly update and I'm going to be using my reading journal to kind of help out on the whole update front. Now, first up, how many books have I read? So I have read 44 books in the first three months. As you can see, I did 13, 15, and 16. Um, pages read is actually um, like I keep a daily page like count and this does not count how many audiobook pages I read because that's just too hard to like keep track of. So this is literally physically how many pages I read, not just how many pages like every book all added up. So that's why these are different. Um, this is how many that I own. Um, as you can see in February, I was really good about reading books that I owned, not so much here. This is how many I borrowed. And then this is how many are considered diverse books. Okay, so overall reading goals, I have these 10 classics that I wanna read in the decade 2020, which means I probably should read about one per year. As you can see, I read three of them in 2020 and I've read none of them in 2021. So um, I'm ahead of pace, but I haven't like done this year's one. So that's kind of a problem, but it's early. 2020 reading goals, these are the 10 books or short series that I want to get to in 2021. As you can see, I've only read one of these 10. I haven't even started on some of the series either, which is kind of a problem. The only one I've read, I really, really enjoyed. So what's up with that? So I also have challenges. I want to read 12 Owl Crate books. I've only read one. I want to read five series start to finish. I have finished other series, um, but I've only only one of them is one that I started, but I think that's one that kind of builds as we go along because um, I have to start it in 2021. Five books that are on my poster that is all about, you know, we're working on it. The Alphabet Challenge, I'm absolutely killing. I've gotten a book that starts with A through M, actually A through P, and so I'm just missing about seven letters at this point, and some of them are actually kind of hard letters, so... We'll see if I even am able to get some of those. Next up is one of my favorite spreads, although I'm not super artistic and the bleeding on the seven and a half devons of e deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle kind of bothers me, but we're just going to roll with it. But this is where I draw out my favorite book from each month. As you can see, January's was the Nyx, February's was the Interpreter of Maladies by Jhumpa Lahiri, and March was the Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. And the Nyx, if you remember, is on that list of books that I wanted to read in 2021, and it was my favorite book of January and probably my favorite book so far this year. So I don't know why I'm not getting around to that. This is my five-star read spread where I put all my five-star reads and I write their names on the spine. You might notice that there is nothing here and I was really ambitious in the fact that I have like 20 spots here or something crazy like that and I don't have a single five-star read. I do have 38.6% of my books I rate four stars and I have 18.2% for three and a half and three stars. So that means a really large majority of the books that I read are between a three and a four star. Okay, my next page is my demographics page. Um, I'm not going to turn it, so you're just going to have to live with this. But basically, on this side is the genre breakdown, and then I color code it based on what rating I gave each book. This is the author demographic breakdown. Of course, I didn't go as in-depth as I would have liked to, and my spreadsheet does definitely go way more in-depth. But I will say that 50% of the books that I have read this year were own voices, which I am pretty happy with, although, you know, bigger numbers is always better. Um, in terms of genre breakdown, so 26% are contemporary and 24% are sci-fi fantasy, and everything else is under 10%. Well, you'll notice that sci-fi fantasy, which is right here, looks way higher than contemporary, and that's because literary fiction, for the most part, um, on my spreadsheet has to be counted as contemporary, and that's where it gives me my percentages, um, but I categorize it differently because I think there's something different between just like your regular contemporary novel and like literary fiction. Um, in terms of author breakdown, 52% of the authors I've read are white 
Now, I really wanted to keep that under 50% and I was doing so well and I was under 50% and I had it as low as like 37% at some point. But in the final like weeks of March, I guess I wasn't paying it close enough attention and it, the number creeped up on me. So I'm really trying to make an effort this next quarter to bring that number down. I want to make sure to keep it down early. So 52% white, close to my goal, but not quite there. So 36% of authors use the pronoun he, him, and the rest are she, hers. I've read several books by transgender authors and, and a gender queer author, so I'm really pleased with that. And yeah, I definitely want to keep that, the he, him, under 50%, and I'm well under that. 27% are actually authors that I've read before, so that means I'm reading a significant amount of authors that are new to me. And 70% of them are standalones, which is interesting to me because usually it's more than, like, way less than that because I read a lot of fantasy, and I am reading a lot of fantasy, but I guess I'm not reading a ton of series fantasy like I thought. Um, another interesting thing to note is that I'm reading 57% adult, 39% YA and 4% middle grade and 64% of what I'm reading are audiobooks, 30% are physical books and 6% are ebooks. So I am just killing the audiobook game this year. Then I have my new series tracker and you'll notice that some of these these mean I read them before, but um, most of these are series that I have started this year and so this is a good way for me to track series that I'm starting and trying to finish so that I can put them for my goal for series finishing. You'll notice that the Extraordinary Adventures of the Athena Club, boom, checked off. So excited about that. And then this is my spread where I just write down all the books that I've read in 2021 each month and then I give their star rating, who wrote them, and how many pages long it was. And yeah, here here we here we are. And then flip, giving myself enough room. Here is my readathon page. I did the Tis the Damn Readathon and I have an entire video wrapping that up. But here I wrote all the different prompts and what I thought I was going to read for them and what I ended up reading. And I have set up something similar for the Mythathon, which I'm really excited about. Um, and I have a TBR for that as well. And as you can see, I've already started filling in what I actually read for it. So that's exciting and keep your eye out for a wrap up. But yeah, that's, that's what I've got going on in my reading journal. I thought I would combine these two things into a nice little wrap up, quarterly wrap up, but also give you a little sneak peek at what my reading journal is looking like these days, especially because I think everyone really loves reading journal like bullet journal content and it's kind of fun to see it after it's been filled out not just like the empty spreads I do like seeing you know that and I also like kind of I can't wait for the end of the year when this is all filled up and you can it'll look like a pretty rainbow and as you can see you can notice it's super blue and blue stands for three and a half and four stars. So you can see that I have a lot of three and a half, four stars. Alrighty guys, that's it for today. This is my quarterly wrap up for the first quarter and a walkthrough of my reading journal thus far. Hope you enjoyed.